standing here at Rouvain Beach on the Breton coastline with the Atlantic just over here. Um, I'm standing on a magnificent uh, coastal landform. It's a coarse, clastic shoreline, also uh, known as a, a gravel beach or a storm beach. And if you have a look at the, uh, at the sediment that's here, it's not sand, it's um, these pebbles, cobbles and shingles. And this is what a coarse class is. It's anything greater than about two millimeters in size. And these are loosely held together. There's no sand or um, other sediment um, in there holding it together. It's just a, a loose assemblage of, of pebbles. Now, with these types of shorelines, there are two different uh, divisions. There's what we call a barrier, a coarse plastic barrier. And if we have a look along this way, you can see that this structure is freestanding. You've got the sea on one side to the right, and onto the other side, to the left, you can see there's a lagoon, there are marshes. Oh, there's no cliff, there's no land rising up behind it. It's a freestanding structure, which has the ability to move inland if the waves push it there. The other type of uh, coarse plastic shoreline, if we look this up the other way, is what we call the coarse plastic beach. And that is where the pebbles are banked up against a cliff, against rising land. And it would be very difficult for this coarse classic uh, beach to actually migrate on land. So with a barrier, it's freestanding and it can move. With a, uh, a beach, it's more fixed. It's more dependent on the land behind it uh, for its movement. Okay, so it's, it's quite a fixed, a fixed landform. Now, in terms of the processes that, are, that operate on a coarse classic shoreline, the, its form is dependent on the combination of the sediment and on the wave activity that uh, is acting upon it. There are, if we have a look at the sediment first, if we have a look down here, there are a number of different shapes of pebbles. Up on the top of the beach, we have these flat disc-shaped pebbles. But as we go over the crest, which is what this thing is here, the crest of the beach, and we go down the beach base, Uh, pebbles like this, and indeed like this one, which are, which are called rods or rollers. You also have more um, matchbox-like shape. Although this is a particularly matchbox, you've got a um, it's, it's more rectangular, more box-like. That one we would call a blade. And what I can't show you at the moment is under the waves down there. There are more spherical uh, pebbles we call spheres. Now each one of these pebbles can be measured in relation to its axes. Uh, that's the A-axis of a pebble, it's the longest axis. Uh, the next one is the B-axis, which is the intermediate um, axis, and that is the C-axis, which is the shortest axis. And you can measure a pebble, and depending on the ratio between the long axis, the intermediate axis, and the C-axis, you can actually plot it onto a graph, and it'll classify it according to its shape, whether it's disc, blade, uh, whether it's a rod or a roller, or a sphere. And that's quite useful, that's called the zinc diagram. Now, when there's a storm, and that's why sometimes it's called a storm beach, all these pebbles, uh, irrespective of their shape, are thrown up to the top of the beach. But then when you've got normal wave conditions like this, this isn't a storm, it's quite energetic, but it's normal wave conditions, that combs down the sediment back down the beach. And if it's spherical, or if it's a roller that can roll, those uh, clasts will roll back down the beach and accumulate at the bottom, leaving the top of the beach where we stood here, uh, dominated by these disc-shaped pebbles. So you get this shape sorting, discs at the top uh, and the blades, further down you get the rods and you get the spheres that have rolled back down with the backwash of the waves. Um, now the reason why the beach can build up like, like this, in terms, of, in terms of this high structure, is because of the permeability of the sediment. If you look at it down here, you can 
can see that there are big voids. I can get my finger into these uh, voids in between the, the pebbles. Now when a wave breaks on it, the water just soaks straight through. It's very permeable. And if it can do that without um, running back down the face of the beach, then it won't have any backwash. And so it'll minimise the amount of sediment that can take them back down into the sea. And so in that way, it can throw pebbles up, but it has a hard time taking the pebbles back down, apart from the more mobile ones like the spheres. So the waves are continually throwing material onto the beach, but it's very difficult for it to take it back off. And so you get these very high barriers forming. A few of the landforms, if we can walk down slightly, a few of the landforms. If we look down here and look along, you might see uh, the crest and then a number of beach cusps in the beach space. And it's right down here at the bottom. What you can see here is that the waves, uh, these current waves that we have at high tide here, are bulldozing the pebbles up into this bridge. And we call that a berm, B-E-R-M, a berm, that runs along and marks where the swash of these waves are coming up and depositing the weight, depositing the, the sediment. The one last thing of note is if you look along, you will see, you will see that the pebbles are all stacked on one another. Look here, this pebble is, is orientated like that. We've got another one underneath it that's like that, and another one like that and so on. And if you look carefully along here, you will see that stacking fabric. And that's what we call imbrication. And it's a pointer as to where the wave energy is flowing from to deposit those sediments. So in this case, obviously, the wave energy is coming from the sea and it's uh, causing those pebbles to be deposited one on top of the other. But of course, if you were in a river situation, it would be the flow of the river that would have been imbricating those pebbles. Now, of course, plastic barriers, as I said right at the beginning, are very sensitive. They can move. If you increase wave energy, we have a storm here, and the storm could quite easily pick up sediment and take it over the top of the crest. And it might do that through one of the cusps, which acts as a, a focus, it acts as a depression with which the wave energy can be focused. 